Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host Luke Cutforth and special guest, the fifth Sci Guy, Noah Finn. Hey! Hello. hey. This week, we're talking about intoxicant imbibition induced inebriation, including its indicators insubordination, inhibition, impoverishment, intellectual ineptitude, insomnia, incontinence, basically, boozy biology. Ooh. How many long words have you got to say in this episode? Oh my god, I can't believe I managed to do that all in one. <laughs> I don't know if you pronounced them all correctly. I did it really good. I struggled to do this when I was writing it. Okay. And I, I did it the best I've ever did done it this it time. Did you write it drunk too? But first. We have a wee review. This one says, I can't stop listening. This podcast is the perfect mix of science, humor, philosophy, and social awareness. It's just what I've been looking for and really rekindled <laughs> yummy love of learning. You, <laughs> you always have a choice. You can stop. Yummy love. You can stop if you really need to. And the question for this week is, if you're listening, then head over to the YouTube comments, get down there and answer this and answer the question. The question is, have you ever been drunk before? Oh my, yes I have. Nope. Really? No. <gasps> First time ever. Yeah, Noah's straight edge. Do you not know that? <laughs> so, yeah. let me do the little intro that I do to these episodes. I would be reading it off the screen, but I just wrote the words, wing it, comma, bro, ellipsis. <laughs> <laughs> And that is what I'm doing. So, as you can see from the title of this episode, Happy New Year, by the way, as you can see from the title of this episode, this is the science of alcohol or the <gasps> science of being drunk or the science of something to do with one of those things. And so we are drinking for this episode. I thought it'd be a good idea. Now I'm very much regretting it. Woo! Everyone say Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year! Year! So, my friends, my dear children, what is alcohol? Alcohol is a fermented thingy. <laughs> <laughs> a poison. <laughs> you are more correct. Uh, uh, yeah, it's you get, you get some stuff and you ferment it. Um... And uh, then it plays up with your your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it, an intoxicant that's poisonous. And a depressant. And it makes you sad sometimes if you're sad. Uh, a, a depressant. <laughs> <laughs> so, the World Health Organization says... Who? <laughs> <that's> <laughs> so good. Woo! 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 The World Health Organization says that alcohol is a psychoactive substance with dependence producing properties that has been widely used in many cultures for centuries. The harmful use of alcohol causes a high burden of disease and has significant social and economic <laughs> consequences. Yeah. However, I don't think that out that out that that crying out loud. However, I don't think that this definition of alcohol is all that correct. Do you want do you know why maybe? Because because uh, uh, alcohol rocks should be the definition. Whoa. No. <laughs> Please drink responsibly and only above the legal age of drinking in your well, country. If, if Corey comes to you and he tells you you need to be drunk for this episode of the podcast, you can always say no. They didn't. <laughs> well, I just find it an interesting definition because it leads very heavily, very early around the, with a high risk of, like, that's not what it is. That is a property of it in yeah. relation to humans. It's the World Health Organization, so their definition is necessarily going to be geared towards ah. their, yeah. their scope. I understand that, the, yeah. The, more, the issue I take with it more is that it is not talking about alcohol. It is talking about a specific alcohol. Ethanol? Yes. Okay. But well, you made me feel much less smart. I was building to something. <sighs> Ethanol. So, <laughs> From Britannica, it says alcohol, any of a class of organic compounds characterized by one or more hydroxyl, that's OH, groups attached to a carbon atom of an alkyl group, hydrocarbon chain. Alcohols may be considered as organic derivatives of water, H2O, in which one of the hydrogen atoms has been replaced by an alkyl group, typically represented by R in organic structures. For example, in ethanol or ethyl alcohol, the alkyl group is the ethyl group. CH2, CH3. Let me explain what that means for you both. Mm -hmm. Unless you can tell me what it means. No, nah, you know what? I just, I did uh, chemistry GCSE. I didn't do good at it. It has carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. And what makes an alcohol is is this OH group, right? So, uh, and the, what it's saying, what it says that it could That's be... That's why it's got a double bond between O and an H. Well, 
Oh. No, you literally oh. cannot. You can't have a double bond between an O and an H because oh. hydrogens can only make single bonds. Um, what it's saying is that the <laughs> when it says that it could be considered um a derivative of water, an organic derivative of water. Organic in chemistry means carbon, essentially, right? Okay. If you hear organic in chemistry, it's got carbon in it. And when it says it's derivative of water, you take water. Take away one of those hydrogen atoms because it's H2O. It's yeah. two hydrogens and an oxygen. You knock off one of those hydrogen atoms and you just stitch your water molecule on to like a carbon chain right. that's got a bunch of carbons with a bunch of hydrogens connected. Boom, that's an alcohol. So what that means, uh, mm. what that means mm -hmm. is that the alcohol that we talk about, ethanol, is not the only alcohol out there. There's methanol. There's there's many others. <laughs> <laughs> so far we have two so hang on a sec so if when you say you know you take so as far as I've understood it here you take an H2O an H2O molecule right mm -hmm. and you knock off one of your um, H's yeah and then you can just attach anything it doesn't matter how massive it is you can attach something not just anything but but you can attach a bunch of stuff and it can be much bigger in size than the original now OH combination mm -hmm. and you call that an organic you call that a derivative of water you, you, you know you can consider a der derivative of water yeah Even i don't understand how it's a derivative of water when water doesn't have carbon in it does it because you're taking off because it's the cause because you're taking, you're off, taking off, off if you have to take it off okay sure because it's a derivative of water because you're taking off the hydrogen and then adding in an alcohol group. But is that I, how it's made? Is that what a derivative? Does it start with water, some process kicks off one bit of hydrogen and then just chucks on and attaches some massive thing. And if it, even if it turns out to be like 50,000 times bigger, like if it's like 50,000 atoms and then you've got one OH, you still call that a derivative of water? That no, just you, feels you, you, you weird. Can consider, Surely anything guys, is a guys, derivative guys. of anything if you take something oh off it gosh. and add something to it. Boy, I don't, I don't if understand. I, boys, if I take boys, Noah, boys, boys, if I grab boys. Noah and I chop off one of his arms and then on his arm I attach <laughs> the alcohol, the Empire State Building, <laughs> and then I'm like, this new thing derivative. is a derivative of Noah. Boys, yeah. remember when I said we had to be good? No. No. I did. I said you had to behave. I think that when you said we had to that. be good, that was somewhat, uh, you know, balanced out by the fact that you gave us two shots of vodka before we started Four. recording. Uh, actually, Four. I gave you two Four. doubles. Okay, well. I did tell you that after you had the first one. I don't one. remember being told to behave. <laughs> I told I, you. Okay. I remember I'm my I'm... role being look pretty and interrupt. You Made that up. <laughs> you know when there's that phrase, there are no bad uh, students, Questions. only bad teachers. Yeah. Uh, I you think suck. when you invite Noah on the podcast, the, you cannot that combine that. That phrase goes that. in the bin. You, you guys are bad <sighs> You can't students. combine that with the notion of behaving. That's you, just in, incompatible. <laughs> can you believe I never got in trouble? What? At I school. I never had he means a detention. At school. He means at school. at school. Oh, I never had a detention at school. Other but than I was like, I had, I had, I I had, like this. I had a detention at school. Do you know, I had a couple. Do you know what one of them was for? Because you were too good. Instead of going to the lunch hall, I went to the shop and got a pot noodle. And oh. we, me and my friends, <laughs> we all got detention. Hello, Gregory. <laughs> I know you don't watch this, but I know that you know that we got detention. You absolute bad boy. Another time I got detention for um, writing my name outside the head teacher's window in snow and ice and it melted away by the time my, deten my detention was finished. That's so dumb. I'm a bad boy. That's really yeah. dumb. I would just like to take this moment to apologize to the listeners for what they're listening to. I would We're not. having a great time. And but so it, are they. It might be incoherent as hell. It's incredibly coherent because I've edited it and I've edited it beautifully. You gotta leave in the good parts. Oh, that's all good parts. So no, wh what I'm saying here is that essentially an alcohol is you take this sort of carbon chain yeah. with some like hydrogens on it and you, you, you attach an OH group, mm -hmm. boom, that's an alcohol. So you can have ethanol. That's like that's like a short chain alcohol. Mm -hmm. Then you can have uh, you can have also methanol and then many other nols. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fielding hexanol, null, <laughs> null <Noll> fielding, <laughs> octanol. Let me just octagonal. Check. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's an alcohol. Eighteen plus only. <laughs> you can have octanol. Look, eight plus? look, alcohol. All I'm trying to get across here is it shouldn't have taken this long. All I'm trying to get across here is that when we say alcohol, mm -hmm. that's not referring to one specific chemical. No. It's no. a class of chemicals. Yes. However, there's lots of carbon and then an oh. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. And the type of alcohol we usually talk about, the one that we find in our drinks of alcohol, is ethanol or me, ethyl alcohol. Methanol is bad for you. That's why... So if you are doing, if you're making your own moonshine or you're trying to make your own alcohol and you do it bad. Here are the instructions. No. <laughs> if you do it wrong, the instructions for making alcohol is get some fruit and f- leave no. it. No, you know what? Because yeah. I went to boarding school and people would steal my stuff out of the fridge if I, I brought food. I brought apple juice and I would just leave it in my bedroom and in the summer it'll go alcoholic real quick. So I just had to drink like two pints of apple juice very quickly. So, so you didn't, didn't get on, alcoholic. You didn't no, do that on purpose. I didn't do it on purpose, but I was really scared when my house mistress came around because it smelled of alcohol. <laughs> I was like, no, but miss, I swear, it's Prince's apple juice. Miss, I accidentally left my apple juice. You're such a baby. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> ethyl alcohol or ethanol is the alcohol we're usually talking about. That's got two carbons, yeah. six hydrogens, Dos. and an oxygen. Six. It could be written as CH3, Ox. CH2, Ox. OH. That means that you've got the two carbons. <laughs> they're bonded to each other. Right. Ooh, cute. One of the carbons is bonded the to three hydrogens. Ease. Okay. The other carbon is bonded to two hydrogens and that OH That's group. Whole yeah. friend group. Right? Now, that is, that, that is ethanol or ethyl alcohol. From now on, when I say alcohol, that's the alcohol I'm talking about. But it's important to remember that alcohol is a whole class of yes. chemicals. And things like methanol, which okay. I was saying earlier, if you if you make moonshine wrong, if you try and make alcohol and you do a bad job, you can accidentally make some methanol, drink enough of that, you're blind. When you make, mm-hmm. even if you successfully make ethanol, yes. just is a little bit of it methanol. Luke? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm drunk. Okay. <laughs> I think if you do it right, the methanol concentration <laughs> is so low, yeah. perhaps reaching towards zero, that it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm drunk. Hey, Corey. <laughs> yes? Why, when some people are drunk, do some people get angry and some people get horny? I know the answer to this, and you will find is it that out later. later. On? Cool. Which one are you? Uh, do I need to be worried? <laughs> not the first one. No, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> not going to punch you. I'm going to spank you. <laughs> so as I said, from here on out, when I say alcohol, mm. I am talking about ethanol. ethanol. Yes. So alcohol is a clear liquid at room temperature. <laughs> It is less dense. <laughs> Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> what if you put Coca Cola in it? Is it clear? No. It's not no longer just alcohol, is it? You bloody idiots. <laughs> you bloody if you put Coca Cola in alcohol, yes, the alcohol is still clear. The Coca Cola isn't. Are you happy now? I understand. Good. Yes. Thank you for explaining. Alcohol is less dense and evaporates at a lower temperature than water. Yeah, that's why it cleans CDs really well. Yeah, so that's why, like, do you when you put an alcohol rub on your skin yeah. and you feel cold? No. Uh, Your yeah, fan yeah, feels cold. Yeah, yeah. When you I got... thought that was just because the liquid was cold. It's because it <laughs> evaporates. Oh. It takes the heat. From I your... do know that as well, but I didn't combine the two. It's okay. I, it's fine. And also, that's how distilling works. So distilling is how we make alcohol stronger. So that's how we take a less strong alcohol and we make <gasps> whiskey. Why were they teaching us that in chemistry class? They 14 did. years old? They're they like, literally... you want to... Di- I'm saying, why did they? Because disti- distillation is a very important more, process. More strong. What if you want to work in, in the beer industry? It's more that the beer industry, <laughs> the you beer want to distill a beer. <laughs> it's, whis- it's, it's spirits you distill. What if you want to work in the whiskey industry? I Yeah, I've never, I've never felt that. So distillation <laughs> is an important chemical process for numerous different things. Right. Yes, it's very good for alcohol. So distillation... It's for to explain that the way that it works is because one of the chemicals has a lower boiling point than the other, mm-hmm. you can oh like in when you're making oil fractional distillation. Yeah, um, I don't remember enough, so I'm just going to continue with my explanation. Um, <laughs> what it means is that you can like heat up both of them, and one of them will then condense back into a liquid at a different temperature mm-hmm. than the other. Yeah. So you can make some. You could like Separate dissolve stuff. something in water. And then, like, separate it out. Yeah. So there's less water. Brilliant. Right. Brilliant. Using the different boiling points. Okay. okay. I've explained this very well. And if you want to understand mm-hmm. it even better, you can Google it and find a slightly less better explanation that might help you understand. Or you anyway, can do moving your GCSEs. On, moving on. <laughs> alcohol dissolves easily in water. And so you, you've never had... Dissolves. You have never... Yeah, it dissolves. Dissolving is when all... So, okay. So this is water. Hello. My, my fingers is water. Yeah. But you're I, doing a podcast where half the people can't see you. you His know, fingers is water. Can I just, <laughs> Luke, you always, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're stopping the podcast, Luke. This is a little bit of grievance here. Yeah. 
every single time I do a visual demonstration, yeah. you cut me off yeah. and tell me this is an audio podcast. Yeah. I know just you've not given me a chance to checking. explain to the listeners okay. what they're supposed to be visualizing in their heads. Okay. And actually, I think that if you do it one more time, like, I might snap. Oh, and break no one. Like well, see, it's always on pod or is it off <laughs> why, pod? This why is, on is this? Pod? A, why oh. does this I'm turn into this violence this is against an Noah? Ultimatum. Okay, I'm just thinking of the listeners. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. So my fingies on my left hand okay. is water, <laughs> and my fingers on my right hand is alcohol. Are they interlocking? And they're Whoa. now interlocking. If you're listening, Luke, if you're listening, what's happened is I've interlocked my two hands. Dissolving is when one. It's basically when one, like, chemical uh -huh. hides in the spaces between another. Right. Right? Yeah. yeah. So when you dissolve alcohol in water, <laughs> like what happens is the alcohol... Like where one of them pretends to be a woman. Uh, seahorses? <laughs> that happens, doesn't it? That's not seahorses, but it is... I know. Yes, there are some fish that... Transvestites. Guys, <laughs> guys, I very much need for you to not get me so off track that I'm explaining things like fish and their different mating properties. <laughs> yes, there are some fish where there are two different kinds of males, where there's a big strong male and there's another male that pretends to be a woman and that male manages to sneak in to the other male's group of women and mm. then it has sex with all of the little women Fish, uh, so that, that it can film. spread That's its genes. That's what the Emma Watson movie is about. I was going to say, Florence Pugh did a Why would you job with that. You're referencing a joke we made off pod. <laughs> no, I'm just referencing the the, <laughs> the, actress. the, the film Little Women. That's, oh, Little Women. That's, That's what that's Emma about. Timothy isn't it? Chalamet yeah. also. It's where, and it's Florence. Where, it's where, I already said Florence Pugh. It's where Timothy Chalamet hides and hides amongst a bunch of <laughs> little women. Sorry, I can't swear. <laughs> no. He fricks them all. He has a frick with them. So. Moving back to alcohol, it dissolves <laughs> easily in water, and that's why. So, if you take vodka, for example, oh, yeah, go on. Vodka. Yeah, um, go on, give me some. Vodka is not all alcohol. There's some water. There's a lot of water in there too, I... and that's why all of the alcohols you've got, uh, they're very. It's very good, and we like when things are dissolve in water because we are water, and a lot of our bodies' systems is water. So, if something can dissolve in water, it means our body can take it in real yeah. good. And also, if something dissolves in water. It's really good because water's everywhere. If you want it and you want to dilute it, you just chuck it in some water. Boom, there you go. You ever seen water in the Sahara Desert? Yeah, there's no water on Mars, mm, man. Yeah. You're, you're spreading misinformation on this podcast. It's supposed to be informational. Alcohol is also flammable and it can be used as a fuel. And I'll remind the both of you that I have a lighter on me and also a lot of alcohol. Can I Are you see threatening it? to set us on fire? <laughs> I'm not threatening house. anything. <laughs> Why don't we talk about measuring alcohol? Does oh, anyone know what oh. ABV means? Uh, uh big alcohol vodka. vagina vodka. Oh, bloody hell! Why, why are you going to make it sexual for the viewers? Vaginas the aren't inherently sexual. Yeah. What are they for? What are they for? Hmm? Um, what is babies? Babies. How do you have baby, dumbass? Um, artificial insemination. Yeah, God. In look. a sexual area. Whoa! Why are you gonna make it sexual? Whoa! Whoa! Look. So, <laughs> ABV actually stands for alcohol by volume, and yeah. it's a measure of the, the amount of Pure alcohol as a percentage of the total volume of liquid in a drink. <laughs> that means that so this is this is vodka. Vodka yeah. I was gonna look at the ABV. I don't need you to look at the look at this 40. ABV. No ABV. Stop on this. it. This is zero. Yeah. It's because this is water. This is zero ABV. This is vodka. This is 40% alcohol, or it's actually 38% alcohol. Ooh. Most Yet spirits. More fake news. <laughs> most spirits, so your vodkas, your gins, your whiskeys, your, your, your liquors, if you're an American, um, they are uh, roughly about 40%. Your beers are about 5% alcohol. Your wines are roughly between 8 to like sort of 15% alcohol. So, what's, generally about 11 ish. I feel like when I have wine, I feel drunk quite quick. Even though it's because it's less... higher, it's 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 more. It's usually it's more, more than, than double beer. percent the alcohol of beer. Of beer. Yeah, but I don't drink beer. <laughs> but you drink. It you drink quickly. cider, which is roughly the same as oh, beer. Okay. I think when you have a double shot mm -hmm. in a drink, in your standard sized drink, that's roughly about five percent because you've got the forty percent alcohol of the spirit, um, and then you add in your mixer. Usually that rough that roughs out at like about the same as a beer, as far as I'm aware. If you were to drink wine quickly, yes. versus drinking beer, sort of. Um, at the same speed per unit alcohol, mm -hmm. would you get more drunk because you've drunk 
it's faster like does it you've said scale something linear? very confusing yeah, so you said have. if you drink wine quickly <laughs> so i'm going to take your question i'm going to rephrase it to yeah. be more correct okay um <laughs> why am i being so rude so what i assume you are asking is if you drink beer and wine at the same unit of alcohol per second yeah so you're drinking the wine way more slowly than you're drinking the beer will you get drunk at the same rate the answer is probably no because carbonation as in Bubbles in your drink mm. change the rate at which you get drunk. We'll get into that in a little bit. What? Go so on. what? What? So That's why you get more drunk from bubbles. Bubbles make you more drunk. They make you more drunk. Bubbles How? make you more drunk. You know, you also get we'll more get drunk there. if you drink. So say you have a gin and tonic, and you have a gin and tonic. That's I would like, never do that. What a gin and tonic? <laughs> gin and tonic is lovely. <laughs> I would no, he does. Never he, likes do pink, that. he likes pink gin. He just doesn't really. He doesn't like tonic. Gin and I tonic. I hate tonic. You okay. like pink oh, gin and tonic. Okay, I promise you, you don't. But okay. Okay. So <laughs> when you have a gin and tonic, if you have a gin and tonic that's a diet tonic, you get drunk faster because your body doesn't have anything to metabolize. Because ah. there's no sugar. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, but we're going to trust Luke. Yeah, it's true. So much. What else is true, Luke? I don't know. Ask Corey. He's, he's, the, he's the one with the research. Well, capitalism is bad. Cap that's true. Yeah, I think so. So if ABV is alcohol by volume, um, not... A big vagina, Noah. It's that was not my. That's what you said. You said a big, and I said vagina. I merely I finished off your thought. Big, what did I? I said the 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 vodka. I said a big vodka. Yeah. I said a big, I said anyway, a big vodka. ABV is a measure. I've said this already. It's the measure of amount of pure alcohol in a total volume of um, liquid in a drink. So, obviously, the ABV will change. If say you've got um, some Coke like Luca's got here Coke and some Coke. vodka, the if you pour, if, you, if, you, if I've got vodka here and I pour all of my vodka into this drink, the ABV is going to change yeah. because the ABV is of the total liquid in the drink. So if yeah. you add another liquid, the ABV is going to change. It's just percentage, yeah. right? It's just percentage. So beers are around five percent, like I said. Wines are around, I think, eight to fifteen. Usually they they sit around about eleven. Um, spirits are around 40%, but they can be like 38% up to like 95%. You know, there's, I mean, and there are some beers that are higher than that. So if you go to say Brewdog, Brewdog have got like the highest percentage beer in the world, or it may not be the highest percentage beer in the world anymore. It was like Nuclear Penguin or something. So, you know, you can, yeah, you, you're supposed to drink little bits of what it. Was it. What was the percentage, do you know? Oh, it was very, very high. I started liking beer recently because I drank a 13% beer and it tasted like chocolate. And yeah. I like beer. It's well, crazy. I mean, Overnight, I was like, oh, I like beer now. I personally need I personally need to and enjoy drinking higher percent drinks because, unfortunately, um, I have a high tolerance to alcohol, which means I need to spend a lot of money if I want to get drunk. Noah and I, when we go out, what, what I do is I get us a double and then a single shot on its own and I pour the single shot into the double mix, double shot and mixer. Hey, no, I thought you get two shots. I thought we we start off with four shots. No, we start off with triples. I tried, right. I tried quadruples, but it tastes too bad. I think we should, uh, we should um, lobby the government to subsidize your extra shot because it's not your fault. You're tall. I agree. What's my not... excuse? <laughs> your family are alcoholics. No, you get loads. Of... Dingling ling, is that the ad bell? He's ringing again. Why is he ringing this time, Cory? He's ringing for after dark, Luke. Why have we gendered our ad bell, Cory? Because he's a boy and I want to <laughs> respect him just like I respect After Dark, our sister show to this podcast, Psy Guys. After Dark is what happens after Psy Guys ends. We just chat about whatever we want to chat about. If you've ever been listening to Psy Guys and gone, God, I wish there were less facts, uh, then you can listen to After Dark. I wish there were more opinions in this show. More philosophy uh, and politics. Uh, yes, After Dark is the show where Corey and I sit down, and maybe with a guest sometimes, sit down and discuss just more sort of floaty, woo-woo-y ideas about things we think with our brains. And where can they watch this wonderful, wonderful show, Luke? Well, they can listen to it and watch it at patreon.com forward slash Psy Hi guys, our Patreon, where you can also support us and help us keep doing this thing that you apparently like us doing. Did you say patreon.com forward slash Psy Guys? Yes, I think I did. I think I did say patreon.com forward slash Psy Guys. Well, if you want to listen to After Dark, it seems like you should get to patreon.com forward slash Psy Guys. That's patreon.com forward slash Psy Guys in case you weren't paying attention. Now pay attention because we're about to start the show. Oh, my attention has been paid and will continue to be paid until the end when I go home. So... Alcohol by volume is one way of measuring alcohol. It's it's very simple. It's a percentage. We've spoken about it a little bit. Let's go on to units. So units, I find really difficult. I don't understand units as, very, as much. The idea about units is that it expresses the pure 
the quantity of pure alcohol in a drink. So one unit is equal to 10 milliliters, 10 milliliters or eight grams of pure alcohol, which is around the amount of alcohol the average adult can process in an hour. So that means if you have one unit of alcohol and you're an average adult, you're in very one mid. one hour, you will be fine. One hour is gone. It's gone. It's, it's out of your body. Uh, that, and, and also... A pint, a strong lager, apparently, according to the NHS, contains three units of alcohol, whereas the same volume of a lower strength lager has just over two units. And would you like to know a fun game? Yes, please, a game. It's not a game, it's maths. I tricked you. You can work out how many <laughs> units of alcohol there are in any drink. I'm just reading this verbatim from the NHS. By dipping your finger in and smelling it? True, if you're very smart, but instead, if you are so stupid and have to use maths instead, you can, in fact, work it out by multiplying the total volume of a drink in milliliters mm. by the ABV, which is a percentage, and so then divide it by a, a thousand. Liter, and it's a and it's five percent. That's f now that's fifty, and divide it by a thousand. That's zero point zero five. So you take units. if you've got so if you've got um, a liter, and it's five percent. You, that's a thousand multiplied by five, divided by a thousand. Oh, uh, okay. So it's five, uh, five units. It's um, five units. Maybe. Hold on. Let me look it's at these examples units. that have been given. It's five units. So <laughs> it's strength, ABV, multiplied by volume, mills. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's five units. It's five units. How many units? Five. Congratulations. Yes. So for example, if you have a 5.2% ABV beer that is a pint, which is about 568 milliliters, and you divide it by 1,000, that is 2.95 units. Congratulations. You can't drive anymore. That's very true. Unless you're in Scotland, in which case in you couldn't place. drive the minute that you took a sip of drink, because we're very safe. I find this really interesting thing about uh, the breathalyzer thing, is if you get pulled over for breathalyzing, mm -hmm. um, they can like find you over the limit, and that's not legally binding. They have to take you to the station and they have to wait 20 minutes <laughs> and then they can breathalyze you. And only then is it legally binding. Interesting. Oh. Well, then you're good to... No, don't drink drive. <laughs> no, don't drink drive. How do you make alcohol? You get fruit and then you leave it. Could it work with vegetables? I'm leaving you. Could you do it with, you could do it with potatoes? That's a vegetable. That's so it vodka. doesn't have to be fruit. Yeah, that's vodka. It doesn't vodka's have to be fruit. made of potatoes. Vodka's yeah. Vodka's made of potatoes. Yeah. What? Where does it say that? Well. I have not been um, informed. It doesn't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> go, right. go, tell, uh, tell so us So you more. get some kind of organic matter. Um, I don't know how broad the organic matter can be. And then you sort of just like leave it to ferment, maybe with some sugar, sometimes with some yeast. That kind of thing. And then it turns into alcohol. Not so, always with yeast. That's for beer. No, no, no. So, I mean, yeast is very good for fermenting. So yeast will ferment. Um, fermenting is essentially anaerobic. Um, anaerobic meaning without oxygen. It, it, it's like, basically, it's when like some microorganisms break things down yeah. without any oxygen about. Yeah. They'll ferment it and they'll make alcohol. So yeast does this real good. And that's why we make wine and beer from yeast. Because uh. we, we chuck, you take yeast, which is like a little fungus, and you chuck it in some stuff. Usually you can find it. You can actually find it on the outside of grapes already. That's how we kind of accidentally yeah. discovered it. Oh, yes. So that's why, already exists that's why fruit and vegetables sometimes um, ferment is because they actually already have a little bit of yeast. Because like well, yeast, yeah. so yeast, yeast is, is all there. around you all well, yeah. the time. There's yeast over but here. But there's but the thing is that when we here. when we when we ferment stuff, when we make over here. drinks and breads and whatnot, we have specific strains of yeast. Yeah. And I did this for my degree. We have specific strains of yeast uh, for specific things because the bread yeast is not going to be. If you take bread yeast, did you try to make beer with it? It's not going to be as uh, good. So silly of you. Why would you do that? No, but like, so basically, yeast. What it does is it makes carbon dioxide. Oh. Um, shush. <laughs> I did a little spit. So yeast, what it does is it makes carbon dioxide and it makes alcohol. So carbon dioxide is what makes the bread puff up. And when you're making bread, the yeast also makes alcohol, but it gets. It gets boiled away. Your yeast from flakes. the heat of oh. the cooking the bread. Oh. Your, and when your you're making alcohol, uh, when you're making alcohol, it ferments. It makes it makes carbon dioxide and also alcohol, and that's why you get bubbles in alcohol. Yes. Your vegan yeast flakes. Yes, they're really good. Can I we love turn those. that into alcohol? Can we just no? So no. nutritional yeast flakes. Right. Um. Noah's calling them vegan yeast flakes because nutritional yeast is yeast that has been grown 
to have like protein in it and then and then it's like dried out and stuff and it's basically dead um and then you eat it and you get lots of protein from it but that's different from like baker's yeast or brewer's uh, yeast which we do have baker's yeast at home so if we wanted to make alcohol all we would need to do is get some grapes or some honey we've if we got grapes to, and honey if we wanted to make mead we'd uh, we've honey. already got mead though. if we want to make wine we'd use grapes if we want to make cider we'd use apples if you want to make vodka we'd use potatoes what can i make out of strawberries you could probably make a strawberry brandy i suppose Ooh. but basically alcohol is formed by fermentation which is like you take it's it's anaerobic it's anaerobic breakdown so without oxygen breakdown um by like microorganisms of like certain sugars yeah and if they break down sugars and they make alcohol and water it's very good. And some birds specifically seek out rotting fruit. <gasps> and then they get pissed. And yes, so do there's el- so many elephants do this that too. Do that. Elephants, elephants do this too. Say. Now this is interesting. We'll get to it in a bit because it's actually really interesting with our like evolution, how alcohol is involved in that. So we can that's not the only way you can make alcohol. You could chemical modification of fossil fuels like oil, natural gas, or coal makes industrial alcohol. And if you chemically combine hydrogen with carbon monoxide, you can make methanol or wood alcohol. Why don't we now talk about the effects of alcohol? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we don't need to talk about it. We're experiencing it. No, right uh, well, that's very good. So let's so talk about it. So it makes you silly, makes you funny, makes you drunk, makes you need to pee real bad. Wobbly. Wobbly. Mm. Wobbly, that's a good word. But let's be more science science, science okay. fiction. Impair, let's be more it, si- it slows <laughs> down the central nervous my system. Inhi- my Guys, inhibitions. Stop. Stop. <laughs> let's be more scientific okay intoxicant <laughs> specific yeah that was quite specific actually and what do you that mean was quite specific. Always i was specific. being i said let's be more scientific and specific and you were both interrupting me that's not that's not what you, you can interrupt with not specific. with specific things yeah exactly and scientific things don't make me e equals mc squared don't make me 0.14149265 my my my, 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 dear, my dear boys yeah. my dear friends i think you're forgetting that i hold the ultimate power here no no i got the buttons i Luke, can edit Luke's got the, got the buttons, buttons. Look at the i buttons. can edit everything your buttons, buttons mean buttons. nothing your buttons nah. help me go on let's be more scientific and specific then Corey. when a person <laughs> when a man <laughs> and a woman love each other very much okay so when a who but 20 percent of the alcohol that you drink is absorbed in your stomach that's a waste and 80 percent right? is absorbed in the small intestine oh, okay. that's why you gotta listen okay sorry or you don't My understand things you weren't even done with the maths yet. i wasn't you weren't even so done with 100% it 100 is absorbed then so there's no wastage i mean look man i don't know Comes probably maybe it's probably some wastage jeez louise Mr. probably I specific. You wanted to be specific. science man too specific <laughs> <laughs> Rounding errors <laughs> by twenty percent. No, not by significant you've, you've figures. Not, you've not been listening. I love to misinterpret you've things. Not been listening. Hey, so Corey, so so why does alcohol make you need to wee? I've peed, and Luke, Luke needs to pee now. I'll tell you later because what I'm telling <laughs> why you right don't you now. Tell me now. Because I have to scroll down my page to see it, and I don't remember it. So. What I'm telling you now is that the biological sex of the drinker hey! makes a difference. So actually, so what I'm going to tell you now is like, basically, there are a number of different factors that influence how alcohol is absorbed is uh, by your body. One of them? It's your pronouns is very important. And my pronouns one of them. If your pronouns are they, them, yeah. you literally cannot absorb alcohol. Whoa. Think about it. When have you ever seen a drunk they, them? Oh, so many times. Never. So all the time. Never. All, yeah, they get, yeah. yeah They've I never have, been drunk. Yeah, no, I definitely have. Nah, I've seen so many drunk they, them. So yeah. so many drunk they yeah. No, so um, what it says here is that the biological sex um, of the, the drinker it affects like how the alcohol is absorbed. I don't think that's necessarily true because if we look into it more closely. <laughs> but is it or is it? Listen, this... no, no. What it actually says, what it actually says is that like when you compare men and women of the same height, weight and build, Generally, men tend to have a higher muscle mass and a lower like fat percentage. Oh. So it's not actually the biological sex specifically. It's actually the muscle mass and fat percentage. It seems so to be. So you get a jack lady, and she can outdrink someone who is a man who is not as jack. Sure, That's but Corey's what it's saying here is that ge- but generally, when you have men and women of the same size, uh, if it's the same height, weight, yeah. and build, mm-hmm. the women still tend to have a higher fat percentage. Oh, it's for the for the womb. They got boobies because they got <laughs> because well, not just that they got well, boobies. They have. They got like a, a whole <laughs> womb and stuff to protect. And yep. most boys, most boys don't have a womb to protect. That's so most true. boys have less fat. But you're valid if you are a boy with a womb to protect and you protect it. Thank you. 
<laughs> because muscle tissue has more water than fat Sorry, tissue. Sorry, can you repeat Gary, that? Can you speak in not a baby voice for a bit? You said inhibition <laughs> wrong in your first line as well. May I just say this? Inhibition. A bit late. Inbidition. Expedition. <laughs> I was drunk, so was essentially um, the way that it works little is voices, the little voices. I'll speak however loud I want. Please, little voices, I beg. Okay, fine. So because. Uh, as I said, alcohol dissolves in water, and mm-hmm. muscle tissue has more water than fat tissue, um, because mu- uh, because alcohol oh. can't dissolve in, al- uh, in in fat tissue. Yeah. It means that if you've got more muscle tissue, you're more like there's more drunkenness. I am screwed. There's more places there's for more the alcohol to hide. Less so blood the, alcohol. Wait, 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 wait. Al- No, I'm confused. I'm confused. So the blood alcohol concentration. Oh resulting from that dose will be higher in a woman than in a man, and the woman will feel the effects of the dose of alcohol sooner than the man will. That's assuming that you're cisgender <laughs> and also have the average... Um, so can I just check? Wait, let me, can you finish this. Let me finish this so that I can be woke. Um, what? It's assuming that you're both cisgender <laughs> and have the... Well, the, you've assumed wrong. The <laughs> average sort of, like, you know, like... um. I guess, uh, fat and muscle dis- distribution of, you know, your assigned gender or whatever look i'm drunk man okay so let me check if this is correct so okay when you are um a female person or assigned female at birth person i've i've never (laughs) been that okay if if one were to be an i am still fab continue if one were to be a a fab person assigned female at birth person they on average have a higher (laughs) fat percentage yeah fat doesn't have water and alcohol dissolves in water okay um, and and if you are a, um, assigned male at birth person, you may have a lower fat percentage on average and a higher muscle percentage on average. There is water in muscles, so the, w- the alcohol can dissolve in the water in your muscles, which means that you get drunk slightly less quickly. Is that correct? Look, oh my God, you should I be like hosting this the... podcast, except for one fatal woke mistake you made. Right. What was my work mistake? You said a fine assigned female at birth and assigned male at birth, but Lucas David Cutforth. Yes. You simply forgot about HRT. Hormone replacement therapy. Hurt. Yeah, it's, it's about it's about um, okay. No, no, it's about body composition more than it is about um. No, 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 no. So you're, okay. you're spot on. No, yes. no, let's be honest. Okay. You're, listen, but, you're spot on. Yeah. Um. The only difference is that like it's not about being assigned male at birth and assigned yeah. female at birth. It's literally about your body composition. Okay. So, Amongst people who haven't had hormone replacement therapy, what I just said is a correct. If we were to ignore of, all trans and no, intersex no, no, no. people, then no, no. sure. Amongst people who haven't had hormone replacement therapy, so you want to I've ignore said, all trans? Oh, and, sh- yeah. Sh- My yeah? point is, I have understood what you're saying correctly, and I've recount what you say correctly. He's asking then, for clarification. You yeah. can then expand that out if you have had hormone replacement therapy and that has caused yeah, yeah, your no, no, muscle yeah. percentage to increase or your yeah. average Look, I'm not, fat percentage I'm not to increase. trying to be mean no, to you. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to be... I'm just recounting so that people can understand and stay on the same page as us. And I'm just recounting so that people can be woke. <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as a transgender... <laughs> I approve of this message. <laughs> so as I was saying, 20% of the alcohol is absorbed by your stomach, 80% is absorbed by your, is absorbed by your small intestine, mm-hmm. and there's different factors that come into like how quickly it's absorbed. Uh, we, we've spoken about biological sex, but ultimately that really comes down to more the sort of uh, body composition, like muscle and fat. Can I check? Yeah. Does that actually come down to body composition and fat, or is that your opinion? So I'm saying that it comes down to body composition and and whatnot because the the source that I'm using, it says that the biological sex of the drinker um, it affects how it's metabolized. But then it has another section that says when you compare men and women of the same height, weight and build, men tend to have more muscle and less fat than women because muscle tissue has more water than fat tissue. A given dose or amount of alcohol will be diluted more in a man than in a woman. Therefore, the blood alcohol concentration resulting from that dose will be higher in a woman than in a man. And the women will feel the effects of the dose of alcohol sooner than the man will. Cool. So, so I can only that assume that it's then. because yeah. of body composition. Source that is true, and it's not yes. your opinion. Great. I would never give. No, no. I, just, I would never only give my opinion. I was just trying to guts. figure out if that was you going, but extrapolating from another thing. I know this might be why, or I'm, if I'm that's actually I'm the source. Own, I'm yeah. solely extrapolating from the information that was given. But and the information I, that was given backs you up. It is not an extrapolation. Yeah. So, also the concentration of alcohol in the drink is obviously going to affect you know how much the absorb, uh, like how quickly it's absorbed. The type of drink, as I said. If it's carbonated, if it's got bubbles... You look like you're just reading this instead of presenting it to the camera. I don't present it to the camera. I talk to you both. Oh, yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. All right. 
fifth side guy. <laughs> so the concentration of the alcohol is going to make an, a difference, obviously. And then the type of drink, as I said earlier, if it's carbonated, is going to hit you more quickly. Um, bubbles make you get drunk faster, basically, if we're going to be simple. Um, and <sighs> if your stomach is full or empty, so if you've got lots of food in your tummy, got lots. if you've eaten a lot, it's going to absorb more slowly. So the alcohol is going to hit you more slowly. Um, if you've not eaten very much, it's going to hit you much quicker. Yes. Um, Ex- me right now. Yes, very good. That's all of us right now. And after absorption, um, after it's absorbed into your body, the alcohol hits the bloodstream and then it dissolves in the blood, the water of the blood because alcohol is water soluble as we've spoken about before. And it takes, the, the blood takes it all throughout the body. Um, it then dissolves in each tissue of the body except for fat tissue like we said because it can't dissolve in fat um and it and like the effects of alcohol depend like directly on the blood alcohol content Mm -hmm. so basically the percentage of your blood that is alcohol that is like that basically directly determines the effect of alcohol on your body um it's obviously related to how much alcohol you've consumed um and it that blood alcohol content can just like jump up like a lot within about 20 minutes of you drinking alcohol. And let's just really quickly go on to like some of the other effects of alcohol. Like for example, alcohol can make you need to pee. I really need to pee. I I, really? I already peed. <laughs> yeah, we had a break for Noah to pee. We don't have a break for me go to pee. pee. I'm back now. That was a very nice wee. So we've spoken about the absorption of alcohol. Well, yeah. After it's absorbed, it goes to the bloodstream in the water of blood. I kind of mentioned that already actually now I remember. Yeah. But once it's in the blood, it then gets in each tissue of the body. I've said this already also. And <gasps> I've also said when that your BAC can reside... Uh, your can, Your blood alcohol content can rise significantly within 20 minutes of having a drink. It's BAV, isn't it? Blood alcohol volume. Um, <laughs> You're thinking of ABV, alcohol by volume. We're talking about BAC, blood alcohol content. Sorry, my bad. Do you feel stupid? No, I don't. Good, I, you shouldn't. Because being stupid. wrong is not a sign of being stupid. Being wrong is a sign that of you have an opportunity teacher. to learn. I'm trying. You have an opportunity to learn, and that's a good. Well Thank done. You. Let's give a round of applause for everyone that's learning. Well done. So, once alcohol is absorbed into your bloodstream, mm-hmm. it yep. can leave the body in three ways. Give me one of those three ways, Wee. anyone. Piss, poo, vomit. Sweat. You guys, sweat. you're not wrong but the kidneys eliminate five percent of the alcohol in the urine right the lungs exhale five percent of the alcohol alcohol. which can be detected by a a breathalyzer and the liver chemically breaks down the remaining alcohol into acetic acid now blood alcohol concentration um i said blood alcohol content earlier because i'm stupid and i can't remember words but it's blood alcohol concentration that is that that is about like the concentration, the percentage of your blood that is alcohol. Um, so, for example, let's go through all of the different things that it says happens with different blood alcohol concentrations. Okay. Euphoria apparently is BAC to BAC zero point zero three to zero point one two percent. So, when zero point zero three to zero point one two percent of your blood is alcohol, this is what you will likely feel. Let's what do you think it. it is right now? If I've had, uh, I've had four shots and then maybe two more. We'll run through it and we'll find out. I, you can figure are out you how euphoric? you feel. Like. Um, mm, I felt more. I felt more euphoric before. Okay. We'll Probably go through the. We'll go through then. the specifics yeah. and you can decide then. It's so time. To <laughs> they may become more self-confident or daring. Their attention span may shorten. Noah, that's you. Oh dear, I'm um, already out of. That. They may look flushed. Their judgment may not be as sharp, <laughs> and they may be more impulsive. This is, I'm just reading this from him. Basically, your judgment goes. Uh, you might be your fine motor skills might be shot. I've never been so, good with like motors. writing or signing your name might be difficult. Um, and then excitement is uh, uh, BAC 0.09 to 0.25 percent. That's you could become sleepy. Uh, you could have trouble understanding or remembering things. Even recent things. And you might not react to situations quickly. I think that's roughly where we are right now. Um, <laughs> their body movements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you didn't react to that quickly at all. Whoa, that ha- just happened. Guys, you got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was very quick, actually. Right? I was actually reacting to Noah's thing earlier. Oh, um, whoa! <laughs> oh. So, your body movements may become uncoordinated. You lose a balance. Vision blurry. I have trouble sensing things, um, hearing, spaghetti. tasting, feeling, all of the other ones. Confusion, confusion, 
is it 0.18 to 0.30 percent BAC? So Do we have a breathalyzer. You're like not here. Oh, we you're should. likely to be confused. You might not know what you're doing or where you are or anything. You could be dizzy no. and like wobbly on your feet. Um, and this is where your emotions could start to be like heightened. So aggressive and uh, or emotional, withdrawn, overly affectionate, um, horny, all those things. Not seeing clearly, sleepy, slurred speech, uncoordinated movements. Stupor is 0.25 to 0.4%. That's like basically being unable to do anything. So you can't walk. You can't respond to stimuli. You can't stand. You'll probably throw up. Like you'll oh, like yeah. pass in and out of consciousness. <gasps> I've been there and once. Coma is zero point three five to zero point five percent. That's your unconscious. Your reflexes. So your pupils might not respond to like light normally. Um, your skin is cold because your body temperature is lowered. Your breathing is slower. Your heart rate slower, and you could potentially die. Death is zero point five percent or more. That's like when you stop breathing, and and you die. But let's lighten the mood, bros. Yeah. Watch this. Wow. That's me showing you how alcohol works. That's but not... you can't see inside my body or know the chemical reactions. So that's useless. That's not... So I'll use my brain to make my mouth make words for you to understand. Thank you so much. I know exactly where I am. That's so true. Yeah, where are you? I am in the upstairs, in the loft upstairs for Psy Guys. It's the Psy Guys studio you are in. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's also a bed and guitar. So alcohol works. <laughs> It mostly works on the nerve cells in your brain. It stops them communicating all good with other parts, the other cells. Um, so, so apparently, um, alcohol um, enhances the effects of the neurotransmitter GABA or GABA. GABA. Good job. GABA. And it makes it, it makes it, it's, that's an inhibitory transmitter. Yeah. So what's happening is if you enhance an inhibitory transmitter, it makes you probably more, because it's inhibitory. Yeah. It makes you more sluggish and slow and, and stupid. Um, <laughs> and, and basically makes what you see in a drunk person when they're, when they're drunk. Yeah. That's, that's what happens when you have, you enhance an inhibitory but transmitter. You, but you also lose your inhibitions. So Whoa, bro. we don't know anything about his yeah, inhibitions. No, because so we'll get into that in a little bit. I you think know we nothing. can get into that in a little bit. So alcohol alcohol also dampens the effect of a excited an excitatory neurotransmitter. <laughs> and that also produces sluggishness. Um and so essentially so right now. how much alcohol do you have to drink to become a slug? <laughs> um I think a million alcohol. Oh, okay. oh, that's a million way alcohol, too and you become a literal way slug. That's very much. expensive. It's too much. Don't do it. It's very dangerous. It's very. What if? What if, if maybe? You no, because if you don't drink the exact right amount, you won't become a slug. You'll become dead. What about a snail? You can't become a snail. Don't be stupid. No, don't be stupid. You're stupid. You. F- do you know what? science? So, oh, so you can be a slug, but you can't be a slug yeah, with a home. You have to be so... a homeless slug. Yes, Whoa! Yeah. Slugs have homes. Their home is the world. You fool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You fool. So, Sorry about oh, that. Didn't realize alcohol we affects like, like alcohol affects a lot of different parts of your brain. The higher parts of your brain, the lower parts of your brain. Look, what does it mean when I say higher parts and lower so parts? So the higher parts would be something like your uh, prefrontal cortex. Um, That's the frontal parts. Yeah, your frontal lobe. It's to do with like like what we would maybe consider higher thinking. And your lower part is like at the lowy, lowy, lowy part. It's like your heartbeat and your breathing and stuff like that. The it's stuff-, stuff you don't even think about. Yeah. Yeah. So your higher stuff is like probably the stuff you do think about. Your lower stuff is the stuff you don't really think about, like your heartbeat. But hopefully you don't drink so much that your heartbeat doesn't do the thing. But sometimes you do. And hopefully you don't. I mean, if you do, you probably won't listen to this because you're probably dead, but it's okay. That's really sad. Hey. Yeah, it's we, very sad. You, not, you don't welcome dead people here? I welcome all people to side guys, except, I was going to say except for left-handeds, but I have rescinded my negative view of the left-handeds. I've rescinded my negative view of the right left hand. hand. <laughs> and do you know what? I raise my left hand in solidarity with all those who are afflicted with left handedness. And I support you. God so bless. anyone left handed, all you had to do was get him quite drunk for him to support you. <laughs> I decided I would support them many months ago when someone got very upset. Were you so, drunk? So this is the order in which alcohol apparently affects the various parts of your brain. The Where I got this is in the description. I can't remember. <laughs> It says cerebral cortex, limbic system, cerebellum, hypothalamus, and pituitary gland, and medulla, which is brainstem. Fun fact, pituitary gland. I only know what it is 
because of the Artemis Fowl books wherein a fairy got a pituitary gland inserted into her so that she could grow big because the right. pituitary gland helps yes, you grow. Yes, growth hormones. Well done. Yes, Good job. That's We're moving it. very quickly. So, moving so fast. So it affects all those. Um, it depresses the behavioral inhibitory centers. So you, you're talkative, you're self-confident, you're less socially inhibited. So that's how, that's how alcohol makes you lose your inhibitions because it depresses the effect of your behavioral in inhibitory sense centers. So all the parts of your brain that are like, hey, don't do that. Hey, don't, 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 don't do that. It's embarrassing. Don't do that. You have parts of your brain do that, that, that are you not to do don't things. Do of course. Of course. No, you, used you to do be a, too. You used to be a gorilla. You stupid monkey. You used to be a cat. <laughs> I still. You got lots I of things going on there. Monkey. Luke doesn't quite understand evolution yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> you got, you got, you used to be a lizard. You got a lizard bit of your brain and your lizard brain is like, blah. Blah. And you gotta get another bit of your brain that goes nah. Exactly. So there's parts of your brain that are like, hey, don't do that, don't do that at all. No, that's a bad idea. And what alcohol does is says shut up to those parts. It says, hey, it says, it says shut up. No, it doesn't so, do that. It it just doesn't let the uh, the don't do that signal through. Yeah, by telling them to shut up. No, at the signal station. No, it says, for me. the signal like, is trying no, to send the signal, no. and the alcohol is like no. Yeah. So like, if I was to, if if Noah was about to say, hey, don't do that. And hey, I, hey, cover, hey, hey, I cover his mouth. Oh, no. That's not me saying do it. That's just me covering his mouth. You don't There's, do a it, difference. Yeah. There's a difference. There's a difference. No, I'm, I'm saying the alcohol tells the parts. Bite your hand. Look, the alcohol tells the parts of your. <laughs> the alcohol. It. The alcohol tells the parts of your brain that tell you not to do stuff to shut up. Yeah. By making them shut up. Maybe it uses chloroform. But, but, uh, yeah. Maybe it uses a hand. Maybe it uses a bag full of doorknobs. We don't quite <laughs> well, I'm know. Saying what about a, a butter Are you sock. saying you understand a the brain, Luke? I'm saying there's a difference. Are you saying you understand the human brain? I'm saying there's a difference <gasps> between telling someone to shut up and making them shut up. So alcohol depresses a bunch of different parts of your br brain and it makes them not work so good. So the limbic system has got the high hippocampus and the septal area that controls emotions and memory alcohol affects that it basically it makes it you more your emotions more exaggerated so you could be more I'm anger I'm so angry. happy yeah, you could be more angry you could be more aggressive you could lose memory you could be more horny you could be more happy alcohol does that's why when you, you're always really drunk you know, the trope is like I love you man and it's like because I say I love you man because I'm drunk because alcohol can make you feel emotions more. Ah, uh, but what if I do love them when I'm not drunk anyway? But that's because because if like it, it reduces your inhibitory processes. To say it, it's to say it. I so, say it anyway. So alcohol can make it easier for you to say things, but also it can enhance your feelings of things. So when people say like, "Oh, alcohol makes you tell the truth," I don't think that's necessarily true. Because while alcohol, yes, can reduce your inhibitions, it can also increase increase the emotions that the intensity of emotions yeah. that you feel and so like i don't think it's fair to say that someone that is really drunk is telling you their true emotions because like they're feeling their emotions way harder oh you're so interesting <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll do another episode on this where we're not drunk where i can explain this more <laughs> more better um and alcohol can affect lots of different parts of your body it can affect your cerebellum your cerebellum is like not quite it's not the lowest part of your brain but it's one of the lower parts listen so <laughs> so the lowest part no so cerebellum um cerebellum if when alcohol affects that it means that you're you're less coordinated um your fine muscle movements are badder um and 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 that's that's where you start to become more falling down drunk when your cerebellum is affected um mm -mm. so as i've said that your, your, your alcohol can go through lots of different things so it affects the first off it affects your senses so your thought processing and your consciousness and stuff it starts to affect that um, and then it affects like the behavioral inhibitory centers where it makes you lose your inhibitions. The, sorry, the behavior of your what? Behavioral inhibitions. I did not quite catch that. Your behavioral inhibitory centers yeah, where great. it makes you lose your inhibitions. So you're more able to, you care less about what you do and what people <laughs> think about you. Uh, so you make bad judgments maybe. Um, and that that gets that gets bigger as your BAC goes up, and then your limbic My system. My brain gets affected. bigger on alcohol. Your brain's dumb. Then your but. limbic system gets affected, and that means that that, Is your, that your limb, limbs, your limbic system, and controls emotions and memory. I That's where you start getting blackouts. You start feeling emotions more strongly, and then um, it goes to your cerebellum. That affects your like fine motor movements and stuff. Um, and and that like that's why you get all jerky and bad at doing stuff when you're really drunk jerky 
Apparently, you could normally touch your finger to your nose in one smooth motion with your eyes closed. If your cerebra cerebellum wasn't functioning, the motion would be extremely shaky or jerky. So everyone, hand out to your right. Eyes closed. Touch your nose. <laughs> Oh, That's Luke, my you're, nose. Look, you're so drunk. You're so drunk. So, See, I thought I was Noah. <laughs> um, so you lose balance more as your cerebellum is affected. Your hypothalamus controls influences and autonomic functions. So like that's through the medulla, which is the lower part of your brain beyond the cerebellum. Um, so that's like nerve impulses and stuff. Um, and when alcohol starts to hit that, that's when you start to get... That's when it starts to affect sexual arousal and performance. Um, and... <laughs> When the BAC increases, your blood alcohol content increases, Back. sexual behavior increases, but sexual performance declines. So you get hornier, but you get worse at you doing sex. That, that's like a Greek that. tragedy. Know I know. That. So it's you like, if you that. get way more drunk, you're like way more horny, but also your body is like, I can't, I don't know what to do in sex. I can't do it that's good. That's so sad. So as I said, as your blood alcohol content increases, your sexual behavior increases, but your sexual performance goes down. So, I mean... There's lots of other things. So antidiuretic hormone, um, the the pituitary gland secretion of that, um, it 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 changes. It basically alcohol inhibits pituitary secretion of antidiuretic hormone EDH. So antidiuretic hormone um, makes a kidney reabsorb water. So if you inhibit antidiuretic hormone, yeah, it makes your kidney like absorb less water yeah. which means that you need to pee more yeah. so that's one yes. reason you need to pee yes. more with alcohol that. I feel um, that. and it starts to it also can affect upper parts of your medulla um, and then it makes you feel sleepy and then makes you unconscious so that's why people can pass out when they're drunk um, and also if it gets high enough to in, in, hit your like I think it's autonomic nervous system so your breathing and your heart rate and stuff and your temperature you will s basically stop breathing altogether uh, and just die um, that's that's when like you drink too much alcohol that it's fatal. Yeah. But also alcohol can affect other bodily functions. It says, it says that um, the lining of the stomach and the intestine, you can hit that. So it can affect that real bad. So that's why you could vomit sometimes. And also like that's why you shouldn't drink alcohol and also have ibuprofen, because ibuprofen mm, affects your, your stomach, stomach lining. lining. Yeah. And alcohol is also like affects your stomach lining and it can be really bad. So don't have ibuprofen if you're drunk. Right. Um it also alcohol increases your blood flow to the skin, that makes you look flushed and Do sweaty. I look flushed? You don't look flushed, you're okay. And a little bit flushed, it also makes bit. your muscles it has less blood flow to your muscles, which is like when you're like which is why you get muscle aches when you're hang hung over. Oh, that's why they look so pathetic. Um, <laughs> and all of the effects of alcohol hap continue happening until your the alcohol is eliminated by your body, which also is another reason for hangovers existing. <laughs> no, I'm drunk, they'll look pathetic. That's that's how alcohol works. Let's just quickly talk about like the discovery of alcohol. Why do you think we drink alcohol? beyond just it getting us drunk. Because alcohol is a poison. So there was a period of time when there wasn't a, um, like post-civilization existing, there was a period of time where um, we didn't have a consistent, um, that's the sound of Corey pouring us more alcohol. Um, we didn't have like a consistent hey. sa <laughs> source of safe water supply. And so we would drink beer as like our, our like drinking water. Uh, what? Yeah, like, there's this period of time where like we didn't have safe drinking water, and so people would just drink beer as their way of uh, uh, hydrating. No, be so no, no. So, so Lucas right. So Lucas right. No, no, but actually, you, water, you're not going. Water you're beer. not going back far, far enough. enough. Yes. So the, I love this. You're so spot on. Um, so let me go back to way far ago, like 10 million years ago. Um, there was a change in our genes. Apparently, there was some studies on this. Right, there was some change in our genes that made us able to digest alcohol Stop more better those biker ones the biker ones are bad what the biker genes what are you on about you know the biker genes that do you know the biker genes that have too much texture you they know the ones denim with the lines that no denim is fine you know the biker ones with like the lines on the knees and how they're really out of style now those are still denim yeah i'm saying they're jeans what are what, you talking what, about? What has what denim got to do with it? Back to us drinking beer as water. So uh, 10 million years ago, we developed roughly about that time, we developed the ability to break down alcohol, ethanol, so good to make energy. So this is why we talk about a beer belly. Um, and the beer belly makes sense because alcohol, you don't just like drink and it makes you drunk. You, you break it down into energy, right? Yeah, it's a great source of energy. Exactly. And so... 
think about this. Fermentation, what is that? Oh, so there's fruit that's like slightly fermented, right? Um, and we still want to be able to eat it. Um, we don't want to waste that fruit. And so we were able to use that alcohol because fruit, when you leave it for too long, it rots, it, it ferments, it turns into alcohol in part. And so when you eat it, that's still good. You can still use it as calories. Fantastic news. Exactly. You also so, get a little bit drunk. That's a bonus. Exactly. So here's the thing. Like elephants will drink some alcohol and get drunk. <laughs> um, the way that humans, essentially, like I think about 10 million years ago, we started to be able to digest ethanol real good. And that's really positive for us because like, think about it this way, right? Like if you find some fruit on the ground and it's like, it's, it's like kind of rotting, only a little bit. Only a little bit. A if little it's bit. like, if it's like, if it's got a s- smell, it's like it's a bit boozy. Eat it. If you eat it and eat you it. can't digest ethanol so good, you're getting way less out of that fruit. But if you can digest ethanol real good, then you get eth- you get like energy out of it because like bear in mind, when you drink alcohol, you get energy from it. But I would assume in those days, almost like in the same way that when we. Um, you know, evolved to crave sugar. And so we found bushes yeah. that had fruit on. We didn't have enough fruit that we would then get like fat. Yeah, as yeah, we yeah get, exactly. As exactly. we have now from refined sugar. We didn't get drunk from the, the fermented fruit that we were eating or not drunk, not very drunk to the point where it would impair us. Not um, so drunk in the way that we to... now get drunk with extremely dehydrated, extremely fermented alcohol like whiskey. Well, okay, put it this way. You don't get so drunk as to negatively impact you yeah. to the point where you're like I can't this anymore. making mistakes more likely to get killed by a predator but maybe enough drunk that you maybe like make some more babies exactly yeah so this is this is what's really cool I think about alcohol in that like it's been around like forever and this is why we spoke about this in I think the vaping episode where I said that like I hate I hate nicotine yeah and alcohol is like Maybe one of my like second most hated drugs, and I would try. I would say like, oh yeah, we should ban alcohol if it were not for the fact that like you can accidentally make alcohol as a baby little child. It's like impossible in a boarding to make school illegal. with a bunch of girls who's scared of his his house mistress finding out that his nah, apple look, juice has turned into alcohol. I was slightly worried. We though. discovered alcohol like ten million years ago, and the really cool thing about that is that like. We, when we were able to digest it, that meant that we could digest like rotting fruit, which is so cool mm-hmm. because it means, oh, here's another like, you know, like access energy. to energy. Exactly. So the ability to break down alcohol m- probably made it good for our human ancestors to make use of like fruit that wasn't being used otherwise. Fun, fun thing. It also got us a little bit drunk. And we then figured out that actually if we leave grapes or grain and shit to like just on its own. This little, they'll just make us drunk again. There was a period of time where the world was like Minecraft, where you just get grape, leave it there, turns into drunk grape. Awesome. I love that <laughs> stuff. Whereas now we understand how it works, which is so cool because we can make it work for us so good. But back then, it was just this evolutionary advantage. And so that is the. Cory, Cory, Cory spilled the glass. I didn't. I actually finished drinking the glass before I knocked <laughs> it off I the be? table. Not yet. <laughs> so that is the science of alcohol and being drunk and the one last thing we have to do is the quick for our quiz dun 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun dun alcohol edition so the rules for the quick for our quiz are the same as always i'll ask one question that's one question between the two of you the first person to buzz in with the correct answer before i finish asking the question wins what do they win luke they win uh the rest of cory's very expensive whiskey Woo! no why not because gary gave that to me and i like well, him gary is my dad i feel gary he loves listens me the to most this. thanks gary for the alcohol so luke what is your buzzer Gary. Noah, what is your buzzer? Ah! And my question for you both is... What is the name for the alcohol that we most commonly drink? Gary! Ah! Noah, what is the your answer? Ethanol. Ding, 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 that is correct. Well done! Do I win a P? You win a P in just a short period? Oh, I need a P. Happy New Year to everyone listening. It is the 1st of January 2023. Congrats to all of us for making it. Well done, little round of applause. 
And with that, we're done. But before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons with an extra special thank you to executive producers Danito and Glitch Rabbit. And thank you for watching. You can find the full references to this episode down in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee comment? Support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys. Or you can find contact us at Pod on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod at gmail.com. SciGuysPod. SciGuysPod. God, call yourself the fifth SciGuy. No, do it properly. SciGuysPod. You're a singer, do it properly. SciGuysPod. At gmail.com. You can follow me at NotCore everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cutforth everywhere. You can follow me at NoFins everywhere apart from Twitter where it's NoFin Adams and on TikTok where it's the NoFins. Goodbye. Goodbye. I need a pee.